1926, Margaret and Henry Rutkin bought 125 acres of land near Fairfield, Connecticut, part of which had once been a farm. One of the best features of the property was a group of pepperidge trees known for brilliant scarlet foliage in the fall. The new owners decided to name the estate Pepperidge Farm. At the time, the couple was pretty well off, but following the stock market crash, they struggled. In 1932, Henry also suffered an accident playing polo and was unable to work for many months, leaving Margaret to sell apples from the farm's orchard and turkeys that they raised. A few years later, their son would also be diagnosed with severe asthma, brought on by food allergies, and it was recommended that she make more food at home. At the start of 1937, Margaret took her grandmother's whole wheat bread recipe and started baking. Gradually, her son improved so much that the doctor who had seen him started asking for loaves of bread to help other patients. When the bread got more and more popular, Margaret developed a sizable mail-order business simply by word of mouth. As demand for the bread from friends and neighbors increased, she began selling to local grocery stores. Bread at the time sold for 10 cents a loaf, but Margaret insisted on selling her premium bread for 25 cents. She believed that if the public wanted a loaf of good old-fashioned bread, they'd be willing to pay for the ingredients that went into it. The business moved from the kitchen into the garage and then into a larger barn, which was converted into a bakery. During the fall of 1937, Margaret began to bake all-natural white bread as well. Mail orders from New York were piling up, and so she convinced specialty food stores in the city to carry her freshly made bread. By 1938, Pepperidge Farm bread was producing 4,000 loaves per week. The quality and healthy benefits of the bread garnered free publicity in newspapers and magazines. Orders poured in from across the country and Canada, which forced production into a larger building in Norwalk, Connecticut, where they could produce 50,000 loaves per week. The staff grew as well, with nearly 50 employees and annual revenue reaching half a million dollars by 1940. Although the company had moved into mass production, Margaret remained committed to quality. She used only stone ground wheat produced at water-powered mills in New England. The dough was still mixed in small batches and kneaded by hand. She also insisted that loaves that were not sold after two days be returned to the company. By 1950, Pepperidge Farm had a new state-of-the-art factory that was churning out 4,000 loaves per hour. And it was during this decade, Pepperidge Farm also began using a new logo. Pictured on their packaging is a grist mill, but it's not based on one located on the original Rudkin Farm, but rather a supplier of stone ground wheat called the Wayside Inn in Sudbury, Massachusetts. Through the 50s, Pepperidge Farm expanded by opening other factories in Pennsylvania and Illinois, along with opening their own mill to stone grind wheat. By the end of the decade, they were distributing their bread nationwide. Pepperidge Farm continued to introduce new products, from dinner rolls and pastries to cookies and crackers. Two of the biggest successes have been the Milano cookie and the goldfish cracker. Both originated in Europe, and Margaret found them as she toured Europe looking for inspiration.
In November 1960, Margaret and Henry Rutkin agreed to sell Pepperidge Farm to the Campbell Soup Company for about $28.2 million worth of Campbell Soup stock. Margaret stayed on and continued to run Pepperidge Farm, which became a wholly owned subsidiary of Campbell. She also gained a seat on the board of directors, becoming the first woman to ever do so. In 1963, the Pepperidge Farm founder, Margaret Rudkin, set her sights on book publishing, making history in the process. Her cookbook, called the Margaret Rudkin Pepperidge Farm Cookbook, was a runaway success, and it became the first cookbook ever to earn a spot on the New York Times bestseller list. In September of 1966, Shortly after her husband's death, Margaret retired after having built Pepperidge Farm into a $50 million business. But the following year, she was diagnosed with breast cancer, and she died on June 1, 1967, at the age of 69. Today, goldfish crackers have surpassed the bread business and are now Pepperidge Farm's bread and butter. The crackers total roughly 40% of Pepperidge Farm sales. They have also shifted from just cocktail snacks to a favorite of kids. This trend has led Pepperidge Farm to add smiles to the goldfish, in addition to creating a variety of colors and flavors. Pepperidge Farm spent nearly a century as a homegrown business and homemade has been baked into their branding for the better part of a century. In addition to using the same logo for over 60 years, the company relies on nostalgia to tell their story. Marketing campaigns like Pepperidge Farm Remembers and Good Is In The Details have made it clear that the brand is all about evoking a sense of the past for its customers. Pepperidge Farm now exceeds $1 billion in sales and has built very strong brand equity, and it all began with Margaret Rudkin and that first loaf of bread. From the beginning, Pepperidge Farm was committed to quality, and that tradition continues to this day. What are some of your fond memories of Pepperidge Farm? Let me know in the comments down below.